Good morning, good morning. It's Amy Amata here on my holiday daily chat with Amy. I'm so happy to have you here on this rainy, <laughs> for those of you who live in the Pacific Northwest, very rainy Tuesday, is it Tuesday? Yes, yeah, Tuesday morning, the last week before Christmas. And uh, welcome, Olga, thank you for coming. Um, and I thought that today I would do something a little bit different. You know, it's, it's very, um, natural for me to focus on marketing and sales and business development and pricing and packaging. Of course, I, I go deep into mindset and deep connection and all that. And uh, but today I wanted to do a really cool exercise on gratitude. And before I get into that, I just want to say welcome. And if you haven't connected me with me, my name is Amy Yamada and I coach entrepreneurs and help entrepreneurs to deeply connect with themselves, their vision and their audience. So including their ideal clients, so that they, meaning you, can create the impact and income that you've always wanted. Hey Savannah, thank you for joining. So today I really wanted to talk about gratitude and I first wanted to open it up. Um, I know we just have a couple people on right now, but hopefully more will be joining in a moment. But would you be willing to share or like go on the comments below and just share with me one thing that you're grateful for or if there's something that you do on a regular basis to practice gratitude. So go ahead and type it in below. And, uh, and share with me something you're grateful for or something that you do to practice gratitude on a daily basis. And I think that gratitude is such an important topic because especially for those of us who are entrepreneurs who really are here to play full out and every single day there's just like an opportunity for growth, for all the, the stretchiness, the stretch challenges we, we put ourselves through and experience as entrepreneurs. I believe that it's a personal development journey as an entrepreneur. And there are moments that feel really stretchy or painful or challenging, or you're working really hard towards a bigger vision and something big in life happens and it can just feel like, oh my gosh, like, did I choose this, you know? And at the same time, for those of you who are like me, where you're just so committed to your vision, you know that there, it isn't about ever letting anything take you down. It's about finding ways to get through that resistance and really practice gratitude, in my opinion, in order to get to the other side. So, um, what I wanted to share with you is a really special gratitude exercise that actually my boyfriend, Ken, shared with me, I think pretty early on when we were dating, and it was something that inspired me so much that every once in a while we'll be talking on the phone or having a conversation, and one of us will do this gratitude exercise. And what he shared with me is that, you know, you can actually select any item in, in front of you, in your life, something that you see, any item, and actually do this gratitude exercise and have it take you down a path, like a, a windy road of just memories and so many things that you can be grateful for just from one, like one thing. So I invite you to do this with me, or I can give you this as an example. And then later today or after this Facebook Live, you can actually do it. You could even post on your own Facebook Lives if you want to spread the joy of gratitude and even empower others to do this. And maybe we even have a hashtag for this because what if it became a thing that we all practice today? <laughs> Let's see. Hashtag. Um, okay, hashtag. Okay, somebody can help me come up with this. Hashtag gratitude exercise 2017. Maybe we do that. Hashtag gratitude exercise, exercise is hard to spell for people. Hashtag gratitude experience 2017. Let's do that, okay? <laughs> okay, Savannah says, I'm grateful for modern medicine today and every day practice the aid method, appreciation, intention, delegation. I appreciate modern medicine. I commit to staying calm during Clint's surgery today. Oh wow, I hope he's okay. And I am, okay, so I can't see the rest of that, but uh, thank you for sharing that, Savannah, that's awesome. Okay, so, Here's, um, you know, I was, I was looking at my, my tree behind me, so even ahead of this, I actually selected this ornament. So it's a little, let's see if you can see it. It's a little egg, like one of those blown eggs. That's kind of bright with this lighting. Um, and you can see this uh, really cool butterfly that's painted on it. So, I mean, I, I, I haven't like prepared for this at all. I just wanted to go with the flow of the actual exercise itself. So, with this ornament, what I'm grateful for is that uh, just a couple nights ago, I had my, my girlfriends, my best girlfriends come over, and every year we each draw a name of who we're going to do our gift exchange with. Um, Savannah says, no hat today. No, not today. Just Christmas background and decor. <laughs> um, and I, I just, 
I just am so grateful that every year we get together and I've known this group of friends for over 17 years and we get together and we do a gift exchange, we have dinner, we tell stories. It's just a really wonderful night. Like they're the sisters that I never had, you know? And um, my friend Roxana drew my name this year and she gave me a few gifts, including this ornament that I just showed you. Oh gosh, with lighting. <laughs> you can kind of see it. So it's this blown egg with this butterfly. And the, the reason why she got this for me is that after my mom passed away back in 2010, um, it was really interesting because I, I remember traveling within a year after that and wherever I was, wherever I was, I felt like yellow butterflies and sometimes monarch butterflies were everywhere. I mean, I felt like I was surrounded by that. I mean, it was just wild. Like either they've been there the whole time and I just became aware of them or for some reason I just felt like I was always seeing yellow butterflies and they just made me think about my mom. And so, so it was really special when, you know, like I know that sometimes over the years, one of my friends has given me something with a special butterfly on it, like, like this ornament. And what, when I think about that, I mean, there's so many different ways to go with this gratitude exercise. I think about, um, first of all, how grateful I am for my friends who really carried me through a very difficult time. You know, a lot of you know my story about when my mom, you know, started this new medication and she ended up going into cardiac arrest and being in the hospital for, almost four months on life support. And, um, you know, while of course there's the very sad part of that story, and at the same time, I saw so much compassion during that time. So I'm grateful for both loved ones and strangers alike, because during that time, there wasn't a single week that I was in the hospital with my mom that one of my girlfriends didn't come by. Like there, every single week, one of my friends would come by and visit myself and my family. They'd bring us food, they write cards and letters. And uh, there were nurses that did their rounds every day, and I didn't even know these nurses, but there was one in particular that I, um, I'll, n I'll never forget this night. So again, this is the gratitude exercise. So if you're just joining, like, just know that you can just take one object and allow it to take you down a path. But what happened was um, there was one night in particular when I was staying over at the hospital that I was really having a, a more difficult time than usual, just really emotional and thinking about how there's, it, it's just, for anyone who's ever gone through losing someone, I believe you know this moment where you realize that this loved one is not going to be here for all these milestones moving forward in your life. And so I was having this just breakdown of like, oh my God, my mom's not going to be here for this and this and this. And it was all about me, right? But it was just about my sadness and my grief over the fact that here she is, you know, in her final months of her life and she's not going to be here. And I remember just being so, feeling so alone and just really being so sad. And this nurse comes in, she's doing her rounds. And um, you know, they're, they, they're focused on their job. They're always really kind, but they've got to keep going on their rounds in the hospital, in the ICU. And instead she's like, she's like, hey, you know, um, you know, I mean, I don't think she said, how are you doing? Because clearly she could see, but she ended up like sitting down next to me as I was, crying and sharing with her all the things that were coming up for me and she just listened like she just listened she was such an angel she just listened to what i was saying what i was going through and um i didn't even know her name you know i just i didn't even know her and 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 at some point she was just she herself teared up she could feel my my deep sadness and she said to me because you know there's rules and regulations for for nurses and family members and she goes can i give you a hug and i was like yes you know and she just held me for like, I mean, like a, like a mom would, you know, she just held me. And here I am like totally being embraced by a complete stranger. And at some point I looked up at her and she had this name tag, but it was flipped over. Like, so I couldn't see her name. And I was like, I don't even know your name. And then we both like in our tears started laughing because here I am like being held by a complete stranger. Didn't even know her name. And then she flipped it over. Her name was Dixie. Actually, we're now friends on Facebook. But it was one of those unforgettable moments where I saw like the, the beautiful light of compassion that one can practice even for a complete stranger. And it was such a gift that night because the thing I needed the most that night was to not feel alone and to even have someone just like hold me and tell me that like, you know what, your mom loves you and I'm sorry you're going through this and it's okay to be this sad, you know? So I'm so grateful for human beings that are compassionate enough to notice when somebody's in pain and even if they're a complete stranger, be there for them. Um, when I think about Dixie, then I think about how just a few months ago I was walking my dog near where I live in Kirkland, Washington, 
and I saw this woman walking in scrubs from, you know, from like hospital scrubs. And I looked at her and she looked at me and it was Dixie. And I hadn't seen her in years. I was like, oh my gosh, like what are the odds that I would run into you in this park? You know, so then when I think about continuing on with gratitude exercise, I think about the parks in this area and I think about my dog. Then I think about Bella. So of course I'm so grateful for my dog. And when I think about Bella, I think about actually the holiday season because it was in 2008 that I decided to adopt a dog. And I went down to the Humane Society and uh, I remember going, it was so packed because a lot of people will adopt dogs for gifts for the holidays. And so it was so packed, there was a Santa Claus there and they had hot cocoa and coffee and cookies and it was very festive, very crowded area. And, um, and I remember I'd gone online to see what dogs were at this Humane Society and I had my eyes on one smaller little dog. But um, as I got there, I saw this woman like adopting that dog. So I'm like, okay, that's not the dog for me. And so I went in and uh, I actually started walking around. They said, you know, you can look at the dogs and, that are in these little cages and then tell us if there's certain ones that you would like to have come out of the cage and play with them to see how your connection is. And uh, I remember seeing Bella and which is, you know, she's black lab, German shepherd mix, just floppy. She was eight months old at the time. And um, so I asked if she can come out and uh, they gave me a ball and she like put on a show. Like I threw that ball and she was like running after it, coming back and just all playful. And it was so funny because I just was like, this is it. This is the dog, you know? So, so my point of all of this, do you see how I went from this ornament? I could keep going for hours, but this ornament with a little butterfly in it to talk about my mom, to talk about my friends, to talk about a nurse that was really compassionate in a moment of sadness to talk about the parks in the area that I lived to talk about Bella like nothing none of this is scripted and I could keep going on and on and on but what I really wanted to do was to share with you some of my own stories around gratitude and in my life but the fact is that you too can do this today and pick any item it could be anything it could be um, like I, I could do the same thing with this magnet that says um, it's a Hollywood I don't know if you can see it it's a Hollywood star and oh, it was funny, it's another gift from Roxanne. Roxanne's a good friend. Um, but I could go down a whole other path of Metropolitan Fashion Week and what that story is meant to be and all the friendships that have come from that experience and, and my growth as a speaker and an MC. So I just, I really believe in the power of this exercise and gratitude. And so I invite you to look around you today, you know, pick an object and maybe even share with somebody what that object means to you and what it represents and allow yourself to go down a windy road of a story. Uh, let just take you where, you where it wants to go and, and notice how you feel. Like even right now, I just feel so like fulfilled with just love and compassion, having shared with you this story of gratitude and this exercise. So on that note, I would love to ask you, um, okay, so I know we have just a, a small group today. I, you know, you sometimes when you, um, <laughs> Speaking of entrepreneurship, sometimes it, with Facebook Live videos, it's really interesting. I'm just gonna give you a little behind the scenes stuff because I think that it helps when we share these types of things. I know yesterday I was sharing how to attract clients through Facebook Live videos. And, um, and one of the things I talked about was to promote it through other means, you know? So like usually I'll email my list to promote my Facebook Live video to invite people to it so it can connect. And at the same time, I also know that sometimes if you email your list too frequently, they're kind of like, okay, really? <laughs> like, and then unsubscribe. And while I'm all about never taking unsubscribes personally, I really don't, because it actually tells me like, this is, you know, this is not for them. Like my topics, my themes are not for them. And I'd rather have people that are totally aligned with my messaging and wanting to stay on my list and receive my emails to stay there and the others to move on, totally fine. But my point is today, what's interesting is that I have only a few people on live and of course it's because I didn't promote it. So it's, um, it's really interesting how, you know, one thing I share with my clients all the time when they're wanting to invite people to an experience or even uh, say when you're doing a, a webinar or free training or an online challenge, how important it is to let people know what's happening. <laughs> so, um, but I always just trust the process, you know, it's funny because, um, at the end of the day, like what I love about Facebook Lives is that even if you have a smaller attendance during the live experience, there's people who watch the replay. And I've had so many people that I've connected with over, especially during this holiday season where I took it from a weekly show to a daily show that have been watching all of them. They're just like, oh my gosh, I watch every one of your holidaylies, you know? I'm like, oh, that's great. So uh, welcome Sherwin. 
So on that note, I just wanted to, to invite you to think about gratitude today. And if you want to take it to the next level, actually do the gratitude exercise that I just took you through. And um, just notice how that feels. And if you even want to pay it forward, you could do a, a hashtag gratitude experience 2017. Why not just try it and see where it takes you and others. And, um, and it could be even something that if you have any holiday gatherings, with friends and family, you could even share with them to say, hey, you know, I was, you know, listening to Amy Mata on the Holiday Daily Show <laughs> and she did this gratitude exercise and you can actually do it with people in your, in your life, you know, and see where it takes you. It's a really cool exercise. So I just want to shift over. Does anyone have any questions for me? Any comments? I always like to do like an ask Amy part of the show. So if you have anything you'd like to ask me, it's just a few of you on here. Um, go ahead and ask me anything, and if not, then we can go ahead and wrap up the uh, the Facebook Live for today. So, grab some coffee. And Savannah, it's good to see you here. It's been a little while, so we should catch up. And if you're just joining me, I uh, just took everyone through a gratitude exercise, and then now it's the Ask Amy portion of the Facebook Live. So, any questions? Any questions? <laughs> it feels so quiet today. I just energetically, I'm feeling more quiet today. I think part of it is that we're getting so close to the holidays that it just feels like, okay, I get to wrap everything up, literally and fig figuratively, right? So, okay, I'm not really seeing any questions today. So I'm just gonna allow this to be our experience for today. And um, I hope that this has been inspiring for you. And I invite you to do a gratitude exercise. So sending you much love, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.